Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you guys are having a great day as I am. I don't know if you remember um, my very, very first episode of this YouTube channel, how I told you guys what my story was and how I got to where I am now, telling you how I did weddings, I did real estate, I did all these other kinds of shoots, right? Just so I can make money, bring that home so that I can provide for my family. Today, I'm actually gonna come through and I'm gonna give you a bunch of knowledge that I have learned over the years on how to do real estate photos. Now, I haven't been able to get behind the scenes on how I shoot uh, real estate photos, but that's coming. But for right now, since I've, I did one the other day, you're gonna come along with me and we're gonna edit some photos. And I'm gonna show you how to do it because let me tell you, it took me two, two and a half years to actually figure out how to do it correctly. Well, how to save time editing rather than spending all this freaking time here on the editing bay trying to get those photos taken care of within the 24 hours that most real estate agents want. All right, but enough of that, no more rambling. So now let's go ahead and get right into it. Now my camera choice is the a7 III. And to you guys, some of you guys are probably like, eh, and the Canon users search is gonna go crazy for this, but whatever. This is what I use, okay? Um, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And honestly, it still holds up its own for the purposes that I use it for. It started off as my A cam, went down to my B cam, now my C cam. For my purposes, this camera has done so much good for me, I don't even get it at all. In today's episode, you're gonna be seeing me, but I'm also gonna be showing you the screen recording of how I edit the photos and my process of editing photos. Later on, I'll try and get you guys a behind the scenes as, as to my process of taking those photos. But for now, this is where we're gonna be at, okay? It's gonna go hand in hand. I know I kind of like jumped the gun, but I wasn't able to do one the other day. So I figured I can give you at least this piece of the pie. So obviously take out your memory card, go ahead and insert it into your computer. My choice would be Mac Studio. So the first thing I like to do is I create a file for the shot that I just got done working on and I put the address for it. That way I don't get confused with all the other projects. The next thing I do is I go into the folder and I create an interior folder and I make an exterior folder. And you're probably just wondering why, but I'll get to that point, okay? So interior, exterior. All right. Okay. So now that I've created the interior and, and exterior photos, the next thing that I like to do is I just import, I just go into my memory card, find all the interior photos, put them into the interior folder. And next I do the exterior photos and put them into the exterior folder. It's pretty simple. Now you're probably wondering, yeah, it's kind of obvious, but no, I'm talking to you. How does Michael Scott say it? Explain it to me like I'm five. <laughs> yeah, that, and I'm explaining it this way, just so you guys can see the step-by-step -step as to how I do things, okay? So don't rag on me. All right guys, so when it comes to taking photos, what I like to do is I like to take photos of five. So that is kind of confusing, right, to you if you don't know how to, if you don't know what you're doing, but it's pretty simple. Pretty much it's a bracket of five. Now what that means is that you're stacking five different photos of the exact same scene and crunching them up and blending them together. So it's, a, it's just one, two, three, four, and five. Now some of those photos are gonna be underexposed, some of those photos are gonna be overexposed, and some are gonna be correctly exposed. And what we do is we crunch them together and blend them. And then that gives us the photo that we're gonna be working with. Now, I'm gonna show you how I used to do it before. And, and I was there editing the photos forever. And I mean hours. And I didn't even realize that I needed this other program, which I'll get to. But again, I'm showing you how I, did, how I used to do things to how I do them now and how I save so much more time. Interior photos have been imported and exterior photos have been imported, okay? So we're good. The choice of app that I use to edit my photos is Adobe Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that bad boy up. All right, so now that, now that I've opened up Lightroom, again, we're gonna create an album in here, okay? And then we're gonna name it as the addresses of the house that we just got in shooting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the first five photos and then we're gonna work on those. And I'm, and I'm gonna show how to do it incorrectly. Then I'm gonna show you how to do it right, okay? Okay, so here are the first five photos that I was talking about. And as you can see, one is overexposed, really underexposed. Exposed somewhat correctly or overexposed, I guess. Underexposed like a notch up and then correctly exposed. So we're gonna add those five photos. So before what I used to do is I would actually go into the photo, bring up the brightness, and I start overexposing the window. See, now that, here's where everything becomes more tedious. Then you have to go into your mask and then you create an, you use the object tool and then you highlight your window and then you bring down the brightness, right? Or the highlights, don't matter which one. Actually it does, but you, you get them, you get what I'm saying. So now we duplicate and invert this mask so that way we can attack the outside areas and not the windows. 
But then things become extremely messy later down the road. As you can tell, they're starting to become, they're starting to introduce some noise into the shadows. And that's sort of okay with this, but it's not. And I'm gonna show you why later. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna copy our settings and paste them right over here and get the object in the window. Right, bring down the highlights. So now you can see outside, which is what real estate agents really like. And then for the overexposed shots, we're gonna bring this down. Not a lot because you still want to introduce some exposure and some highlights later in the photo once you blend all photos together, okay? You want to bring the highlights down, completely down, because this is overexposed big time. So now we're going to copy and then we're going to paste this to the other photo. Yep, just like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all the photos by using shift and then just go to the end. And then you're going to right click on this guy. You're going to do photo merge and we're going to do HDR merge. So, you know, the problem with this is that you have to go individually with every single photo, the underexposed, the overexposed, and the correctly exposed photos. And you have to do that to all the photos that you took of the house. And that's the part that becomes really time consuming because your settings do change and even though they shouldn't, but they do sometimes. So now you're having to second guess how you shot the photo and what settings they were applied. Then you have to go in and fine tune everything, I mean, to the, to the T. And that's what, that's the crappy part of doing all this. So now that we've done this, now that they've blended, they're showing us what, we, what we're getting here. We're gonna hit merge because that's what we want to do. And then it's gonna give us a sixth photo that we're gonna be working with. Now, if I was to get the mask tool and then select the object, now I applied that object to the windows, the first three selections that I made earlier in this video, okay? And we're gonna bring down the highlights a lot so now you can still see outside. And then the brightness, you don't wanna do it too much because you don't wanna lose the detail. So now we're gonna go ahead and do some contrast just a little bit. Let's do 10. Now we're gonna duplicate and invert this mask so that way we start attacking the outside of the windows, okay? And this is how this photo is gonna come apart. And you're gonna start quickly seeing what's gonna happen. And this is the part that I had to go in and take so much time just to go ahead and correct it and it took me so many hours every single time per photo. And this is why we're talking about this topic today because I wanted to save you guys some time, a lot of time, and I want you guys to not have to go through that whole struggle like I did and then just go from here, end up right over here as fast as possible, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring up our exposure. We're going bright. See the window is starting to brighten up and sure you can add a mask and bring down that brightness, but you see what I'm saying? You start, it looks okay for what it is, but even the drapes are starting to look, um, I guess they look okay. All right, anywho, back to what we were doing, okay? So we're bringing up the highlights here, and then we're bringing up our shadows, and you see, you see the ground is starting to be really overexposed. Sure, you can add a mask to it, and it's gonna highlight that. And it's not perfect, okay? So I'm not gonna tell you that this works every single time. The masking tool, it's not perfect, but it does okay. You have to sometimes go in there and brush it. And see, this is what I was talking about. Your image starts to fall apart real quick. See, so now we have to go up. And even if I was bringing the exposure down, no. And then next you would do your, your color temperature right. And next you would do your main, uh, your main edit. As you can see right there, and our shadows come up, but everything is still being overexposed. Even the door just looks, it doesn't look good. Now, I left that on purpose, the two uh, little trash deals right there. That's fine, I realized that I took that photo afterwards and I'm leaving it here for purpose, for these purposes. Anywho, you start to bring down the highlights a little bit more and your windows are being affected now. That's bad, you don't want that. So, that's the bad way, don't do this way. It's gonna take you forever. So like about spring of last year, 2023, I came across this program, right? Cause I was like, there, there has to be a faster way to edit. Cause this is way too time consuming. I was like, I don't understand how people are punching out 10 houses in like 10 houses in one day. And that's probably over exaggerating, but you get my point. So I went on the hunt and I found the program. So let me tell you, this program was worth every freaking dollar because it cut me so much time in the editing process. And I was able to go and enjoy my time with my family. I'm not being sponsored by them, by any means. So this is just my hot take on this program, okay? 
That program is actually called Photomatics. This program, what it does, it pretty much blends all your photos, those one, two, three, four, five photos that we talked about earlier. And it does it better than Adobe Lightroom, to be honest with you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the program. Then you click on Batch Bracketed Photos. You select the folder that you wanna work with. This is why we did those interior and exterior photos earlier. So now we're gonna go ahead and find our file. We're gonna click on it and we're gonna hit select. So remember, I took five photos. So that means that every single photo is bracketed five times, underexposed, overexposed, correctly exposed, and then the other two right in between. We're gonna click on merge five. And five is not the magical number. Five is for like those windows that are really bright and then you're trying to save some information down in the shadows as well. That's the best way that I can explain it for you guys. And five is not, and again, five is not the magical number. Sometimes you bracket photos in threes. Those are like for areas where there's no windows. And that works just fine. But for me, at this house, I did five photos. We're gonna select five. You can't select three, just like we said earlier. And then for the presets that they use, it's kind of, the presets are pretty much what you use in Adobe Lightroom. For me, my poison is interior two. Now that you don't have to worry about any of the other options in here, you just have to do those ones right there. Just to let you know, these photos are being saved as a TIFF format and that's totally okay. Don't worry about it. You can still edit quite a bit of the information and not lose any detail. So you're good, okay? Well, once we select those options, we're gonna go ahead and hit run. Now that I've hit run, it's blending all those five photos that we're talking about into one. So it's taken away a lot of legwork, not all of it, because you still have to go in there and edit. Now that it's done, this is where you're gonna see at the bottom, I'm just telling you where we saved that folder. To show you the proof, we're gonna go ahead and open up our folder. And I did the interior first. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Here's our folder. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and select all the photos that were in it, just so I can show you guys. 125 photos, so that is, divide that by five, 25 photos. So 25 photos should be in this folder here. So select all 25 photos. That's how you know you did it right. So now what I wanna do is I wanna blend the exterior photos. So what I need to do is I need to go back into the select folder, go into the folder that I made earlier. Here it is. We're gonna go ahead and select. Now, I took photos of three for the outside. So that means that I gotta change this option. I already did. I gotta change this option from five to three because the brackets was in three. Now that we've selected the new merge to three, we're gonna go into our preset setting. And honestly, to, just to get to the nitty gritty of it, it's realistic too. That's the best one that I found that works great. So that's the one that I believe that you should use as well. We're gonna go ahead and hit run. It's gonna, it's gonna blend all three photos for one now for us, okay? For this one, there was 36 photos. So 36 divided by three is 12. I did the math already, I'm just playing with you guys. <laughs> I'm not that good at math. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> All right guys, so it looks like Photomatics has done both the interior and the exterior photos, so that has saved us a boatload of time. I'm telling you guys, you probably saved yourself maybe one or two hours, if not more, just letting Photomatics take care of all the blending for us. We're gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom again. I'm gonna delete the crap out of the original photo that I was editing. And I'm gonna go into interior. So we're gonna go into the Photomatics folder that we created today. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all and I'm gonna go ahead and drag them. But now we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with the exterior photos. I'm gonna go right back into that exact same photo that I started off with in this video. So I can show you guys how everything works at a lot easier. It has already done the legwork for us. As you can see, the windows are prop or almost properly exposed. The interior is looking good. It's, you're not losing a lot of detail. Remember that darkness behind this door? It's not as grainy as it was earlier. There's not a lot of noise in there. So this becomes a lot easier for us to grade. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask, get the windows, right? Oh, there. Now we're gonna bring our highlights down um, 25, let's, let's just negative 25. And then our exposure down, just about negative 20. Add a little bit of contrast, 10 is fine for me. Uh, bring up our shadows just a tiny bit. I'll just do five. So now we're going to affect the entire photo and it's okay if, the, if our mask blows up in exposure. I'm totally okay with that because we can bring it down, okay? So don't worry about that. So let's start affecting the entirety of the photo. So let's put it at 1.0. Let's bring down our highlights. 
Uh, let's do 35. I, I, I like how it is right there. Look, even this reflection here of the light is not, as bad, is not as bad as it was earlier with that other photo. I guess I shouldn't have deleted it, but whatever. This is what happens when I increase the shadows, okay? All the way up. That's way too overexposed. So we're gonna do just a tiny bit down. I think 35 looks good. Let's do 45 and let's go 50. And now our windows are looking a little overexposed and I'm totally okay with that because I can bring that down. And look, now we're back where we started and that's really good. This is what I was telling you about earlier. I, I love this program because it helped me out so much after I figured out it existed. Ah. All right, so now bring down our shadows just a tiny bit. Okay, that's fine. Our color temperature outside. Let's see if we can match it. Uh, not too cool, not too warm. Let's probably do like a negative five. That's good for me. So this right here, this couch is looking a little weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a select on the mask. This is what's bad about this mask sometimes. So what I do is I just use the brush tool and then just fill it in. And then you can tell what's going on, what's happening. And there we go. We'll bring on the shadows just a tiny bit so it's not overly exposed. Bring on the highlights, there it is. This photo is looking real good. However, I don't like the temperature of the inside of the house. So let's go ahead and modify that just a tiny bit. Cause everybody loves that daylight look. So I think about negative 10 looks good. Yeah, that's fine. And then the orange, we can bring this down. Check this out. If we go right into our color mixer and we go straight to the orange dial, we can bring down this orange color. Let's not do a lot and go crazy because then the floor is gonna start to look burnt. But this is what it looks like if you bring it all the way down. So you don't want that. You just, I think negative 20, negative 20 is actually looking really, really fine. And then there's saturation. Let's add just a little bit. Um, I think five is fine. And then our hue, we don't want to mess with the hue too much, okay? Because then you're going to start to look real red and then real gross, like you're sick. So I think negative 10 rocks. And sometimes with these colors in the sunlight, it starts to bounce color up onto the ceiling. You don't want that. So I'll go into the yellow because I can see a little bit of yellow, I think is what the color is. And then, and I'll tell right now when I bring down the luminance, see it's everything. So I'll bring that down to zero. And then the saturation, take that out. I think that's where it is right there, the saturation, negative 20. And I do kind of want to bring up the ceiling, the because it's kind of dark up there for me. So we kind of want to emulate what's, you know, because the light is bouncing off the ground. So we want to make sure that it's being lit up there as well. And it's not doing what I want. So we're going to go, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to use this brush tool. And I just want to select this area. And this wall. There. We're gonna bring up the shadows only. And look at that. No complaints. No complaints at all. And you know, this side right here, we could say that it's looking a little bit overexposed. We could say that. So I'm gonna bring a brush tool, select this area, just kind of brush it, right? Right here, right here. And then we're gonna bring down the highlights just a tiny bit. And look at that. I, I love this. I, I love this photo. I think it came out really nice. I mean, we could take out this stuff. And cords, let me, let me tell you something. When you're at the house, just try to hide as many cords as possible. That's what's gonna separate you from an amateur or some people that are really well established but don't like to remove the cords because they can edit it in post. <laughs> I, I've been guilty of this as you can tell, but try to remove them. As I go in around the house, I found like plugins and stuff and that were already in the outlets. And I just took those out because it's just gonna take forever and it's gonna take a lot more time for you to get them out, okay? So just try and take care of that. To remove that, we're gonna go ahead and open up our healing tool and we're gonna click on content aware remove. This, this is sometimes good, sometimes I do the cloning one, but we'll see what happens here. And I only wanna select the cord Oh, 
Oh, look at that. But you can tell there's a power cord right there. So we're going to go ahead and remove this shadow. Ta-da. Better. And then we're going to remove this cord right over here. I need to bring, I need to lower my brush tool. And then you can kind of tell there's a cord right there. So we're going to take that out. Boom. This is why I love Photomatic. So it did so much work for me. I only had to go in there and spend maybe five, five minutes, if, if that. And that's because I'm showing you guys. If I wasn't showing you guys, easy. So now, before I move on to the outside photos, let me show what it looks like before. And now let me show what it looks like now. I think it's beautiful, okay? The door is a little bit overexposed now that I'm looking at it, but that's okay. Go in there, use the object, select the door. There it is. And then bring down the highlights just a tiny, uh, that's a lot, right there, right there. Let's just do negative 25, done. Okay, before, after, beautiful. Now let's move outside. It already did a lot of the work for us, which is really good. You can tell that the sky is a little bit blown up, a lot, but that's okay, I can fix that. We're gonna go ahead and open up our masking tool, select the sky only. And it does a pretty good job since it misses things, but that's totally okay. You can just go and, you know, if it doesn't cover it all, we can do a plus and then use the brushing tools. Let's decrease it. I just got done talking about cords, but there's nothing we can do about that. And you don't wanna false advertise, okay? That's the other point. So we can't remove the cords here. It is what it is but we can't affect the sky. So let's go ahead and bring down the uh, highlights on the sky. I think negative 50 is pretty good for me. Now I only want to affect the ground. So the easiest thing that I can do is I can duplicate and invert the mask rather than targeting the whole picture entirely. And then just bring up the exposure just a tiny bit. Now the shadows I can see are pretty dark for me, so I don't want that. I want to bring it up. And I think I did too much. I think. 30 is fine, yeah. And then we're gonna go ahead and decrease our highlights. Let's do 75, I think it's good. All right, so now we gotta fix the color temperature of the outside, 5600. But I wanna make it look, I wanna make it look a little bit warm, only because the sun was out. And I think that right there is 10 is the good one. If I go higher, you can see what happens. And even 27 is still eh. So I think 10, works for me all right guys so i hope that you learned quite a bit and by that i mean a lot and realize you know i made my own mistakes and i'm totally okay with that and now i'm showing you guys how i do things because i learned them the faster way and the more efficient way i don't do a lot of real estate photos so you know i can edit the photos by myself and keep a lot of the profit for myself so that that's a good that's a plus side and i don't and like i said earlier in this in this video when i started my journey i went and did a lot of different routes and I don't want to say niche because honestly, I freaking hate that word now. Everybody in their moms uses it and it's loosely said and I hate that. So when I got in, in this industry, I went to different categories of it and I don't care because it's, it's something I want to do. And, you know, there's a lot to be said about being a generalist versus a specialist. But honestly, to each their own. You go, you do what you want. Obviously, don't go and do that. Please. Hey, you do whatever you like. We, we can't condone anything of the sort. No, we can't. Live! Live! It's live! At the end of the day, do what you love. Do what makes you happy, okay? This makes me happy. I don't have to be going into one category of this industry. I can just pick and choose where I want to go. And, you know, it keeps my mind working. You know, I'm not, I won't get stuck in a rut because that's, Usually what happens when you're stuck in the nine five, you eventually get stuck in a rut. But with, when you start to go in, into different areas, then your mind's working. But that's how I view things. We all have reviews, totally okay. So anywho, enough of that rant. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next one.